Hello, and welcome to a short lecture on Importance Performance Analysis, or IPMA. So what is IPMA? Well, it's a business research technique that was created to examine and suggest management strategies. In a marketing context, Importance Performance Analysis is defined as a quantitative approach for measuring how customers feel about certain characteristics of a product or service. So when you're able to identify the most important traits of your offering, then this method really helps you discover what areas of your product or service should be focused on. So IPMA looks at two constructs, which are perceived performance and importance, which are then combined into a two-dimensional plot. The plot then classifies the items into one of the four quadrants. Each of these quadrants will have varying degrees of importance and attention placed on them due to the limited resources that are available. The first quadrant, which is possible overkill, includes qualities that are of low importance to customers, but they're also performing at a high level, which illustrates that the company may be allocating too many resources to this attribute. The second quadrant, which is keep up the good work, refers to attributes that are both of high importance and they're also performing very well. Essentially, the attributes in this quadrant are the key areas of strength. Following this, the attributes in the third quadrant or the low priority area aren't very important to customers and they're also not performing too well. Finally, quadrant four, or concentrate here, includes attributes that are of high importance that are underperforming. This area will include aspects that are seen as major weaknesses and they can be threats to the success of the product or service. Now these attributes should be the top priority. Now let's move on to applying IPMA to a practical example, which will be brand communities in this case. Brand communities are basically communities where people who feel connected to a brand gather regularly and they share an interest in a particular brand. Furthermore, brand communities have emerged to be an important platform for interaction, not only between the customers and the companies, but also among the members of the community. The members can connect with each other and participate in many different ways. They can communicate and interact with other members, they can ask questions, they can engage in discussions, they can create content, and so on. Now we'll consider the key target constructs for this example. The first construct is customer satisfaction, which is the extent to which the product's perceived performance matches a buyer's expectations. We then have engagement, which has been defined as a customer's behavioral manifestations that have a brand or firm focus beyond uh, the mere purchase resulting from motivational drivers. We also have relationship quality, which is known as the degree to which the consumer views the brand community as a satisfactory partner in an ongoing relationship. And finally, we have identification, which basically refers to how members feel as if they are a part of the brand community. Next, we'll look at motives for engagement. The first of which is receiving and sharing information, which can help consumers learn about the brand and its consumption aspects. We also have social integration, which is an individual's need to interact with others for the purposes of social support, friendship, intimacy, and so on. Interactions can come in the form of commenting, engaging in discussions, and many other things. We also have self-discovery, which is a person's motive for better understanding themselves, and this is accomplished through engaging in social interactions. Now, through these interactions, a person should be better able to understand their own preferences, tastes, and values. We also have status enhancement, which is defined as the value that a member derives from gaining acceptance and the approval of other members of the community, as well as the enhancement of one's status based on their contributions to the community. And finally, we have entertainment, which is about fun and enjoyable activities that community members can engage in with other members. And it can be anything from events and contests to workshops and classes. So now we'll briefly consider the analytical technique of partial least squares structural equation modeling, which allows for estimating complex cause effect relationship models. Now one should use this method of analysis when the goal of the research is predicting key target constructs or identifying key driver constructs. In terms of the results, we'll be looking at the total effects and average latent scores. The total effects represent the predecessor constructs importance in the formation of the target construct, while the average latent variable score represents the performance. So here's the structural model with the identification construct, as well as the five motives that should lead to customer engagement in the brand community. The outcomes of this engagement are relationship quality and customer satisfaction, as you can see here in the figure. 
Now in the model results, you can see the path coefficients for each construct. Entertainment was found to be the most important construct in explaining customer engagement in brand communities. This is followed by identification, status enhancement, information, and self-discovery. The social integration construct didn't have a significant relationship to the customer engagement construct, which meant that it was excluded from further analysis. So here's the importance performance map for the motive constructs. You can see these scores for importance on the horizontal plane, and those are simply the path coefficients that you saw in the previous slide. So what do the results mean in terms of practical implications? First of all, the results reveal that brand communities appear to be doing rather well in terms of entertainment, and therefore keeping up is the recommended course of action. The next most important construct appears to be identification. So an improvement for this construct would likely boost customer engagement. Thus, the recommended course of action is to do better. The third construct is information, whereby brand communities need to educate members about the importance of information. And finally, self-discovery and status enhancement warrant a no change recommendation. So you can also look at the results on the indicator variable level, which shows the importance and performance of each unique item that makes up the entire construct. So let's look at an example. The entertainment contract includes three items. So you can see how each entertainment item is viewed in terms of its performance and importance and what kind of action should be taken. As you can see, all three of the entertainment indicators have reasonably high performance and their overall importance is also quite high relative to uh, other variables. So for these reasons, the entertainment items belong to the keep up category. Uh, you can also view the results in the form of an importance performance map. You can see the three entertainment motives in the top right hand corner of the keep up quadrant, which illustrates their high importance and performance. On the basis of the results, effective marketing programs can be developed because managers can see the impact on key constructs, such as customer satisfaction, like we saw in the brand community example. Overall, IPMA helps managers realize what aspects of their product or service should be focused on, which ones should be kept the same, and which ones should be removed if necessary. Simply put, it helps managers understand where the focus should be placed. So this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this brief lecture on importance performance analysis. Mm -hmm.